We can also load fixture profiles that are available at the Elation Lighting website. This will allow you to load fixture profiles into the Show Designer 2 from the compact flash port or the RS-232 port. Fixture profiles contain detailed information about a lighting fixture such as the name and function of each of the channels as well as the name and DMX values of the steps within a channel. Once loaded, a profile can be selected from the fixture list when choosing fixtures. Fixture profiles are most useful when using the data wheels to program lighting fixture channels. The display will be able to show the function and current setting for a channel. The wheels will be able to select pre-programmed steps within a channel, such as the colors on a color wheel. To load a fixture profile from the disk, press the menu button, then use data wheel 1 to scroll through the various options. Once you've found load fixture profile from disk, press enter. As long as you've stored the information on the disk, you will get a list of all the fixture files that are on this disk. You can then use data wheel 1 to scroll through the various files. Once you find the fixture that you want to load, press the enter button. These are very small files so it will load immediately. Once it's loaded, press the menu button. This gets us back to our options menu. We can then use data wheel 1 to get to the choose fixture setting and press enter. I've already named fixtures 1, 2, 3, and 4, so I'll go to my next available fixture which is 5. I can then use data wheel 2 to find the profile that I've loaded. The difference between a fixture profile and the standard library file is the word in parentheses here that reads profile. To select it, press enter. Once again, you'll get a message that appears that says the auto patch is on and some addresses may change. Press yes to confirm. We'll then use data wheel 1 to get to fixture 6. We'll use data wheel 2 to select the fixture profile once again and press enter. Once the message appears that some addresses may change, press the yes button. Data wheel 1 will get us to fixture 7. Data wheel 2 gets us to the fixture type, which is our profile, in which case we'll press enter, then the yes button to confirm. Fixture 8, fixture type, then enter, and yes to confirm. We've now selected four PowerSpot 250 profile versions. To exit, press the menu button two times. Now that I've selected four fixtures from the internal fixture library and four fixture profiles from the Elation website, I'm going to show you the differences between the two. I'll select fixture, then select one of my first four fixtures by selecting the relevant button. Selecting fixture button four brings up the standard fixture from the internal fixture library. It'll display the first four channels for the selected fixture. The pan and tilt functions are displayed in values, which is normal. Pressing the right cursor button gets us to the next set of four channels. As you can see, our color and gobos are also in values. Adjusting the wheel up increments in values of 5. For finer adjustments, press the Find button, in which case it increments in values of 1. I'll now show you a fixture profile from the Elation website. Fixture 5 is a fixture profile in which case it's now showing us the first four channels that are the pan and tilt settings. Once again, they are in values which is normal. We'll press the right cursor key, which now shows us more detailed information about the color channel and more detailed information about the gobo channel. Adjusting the wheel, one click 
will automatically snap to a new color or half color. For the gobo wheel, each click snaps to the next gobo. When programming, this is easier as you know which gobo you are at and what color you are at for all selected fixtures. In addition, fixture profiles give you presets on pages F1 through F4. I'll now select a preset from my color palette which are all these top row. Selecting button number two on the color preset row gives me an open blue color. For the gobo, I can select any from the second row. Selecting button 18 activates gobo 6. Now using these presets are a lot faster than having to use the faders or the wheels as you can quickly change the way your stage looks. To gain manual control over your fixtures, Press the fixture button, then select the fixtures that you want to control by selecting from the 1 through 48 buttons. I'll select fixtures 1, 2, 3, and 4 as I'll be controlling four power spot 250s in this demonstration. You can then use the eight channel faders, the four data wheels, and the joystick to control the channels of your lights. The display shows you four channels at a time. To see the next four channels, press the right arrow button. Press the right arrow button again to see the next four channels. To see the previous four channels, press the left arrow button. If you're going to be using the faders to control your lights, while the LED for bank one is lit up, you have control of channels one through eight. Pressing the bank button will illuminate the second bank which gives me control of channels 9 through 16. I'll open up the shutter and dimmer with channels 15 and 16 by raising the two faders up. I'll then bank up so I can use faders 1 and 2 to control the pan and tilt or once again you can use the joystick to control the movement. we press the left arrow key and get to our pan channels, we can also use the wheels to control the beam position. It's real helpful to have your DMX chart handy when controlling lights, especially when you're using the faders, as there's no detailed information telling you what color comes up when and what gobo comes up when. We'll use the wheel to adjust our colors. Once again, this adjusts in increments of five. Pressing the fine will adjust in increments of one, which gives us a finer adjustment.